Remembering the March on Washington and King's Historic Speech by McClatchy Washington, adapted by New ZLA staff on August 28, 2013. Word count, 804 words, 970 Lexile level. <clears throat> People listened to speakers during the 50th anniversary of the March on Washington and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech at the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. on August 24, 2013. <clears throat> Washington. Tens of thousands of people from across the United States gathered in the nation's capital on August 24th to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the March on Washington. Yet they were not just there to remember the past. They rallied for what they believe is the unfinished business of the historic civil rights battle. The group assembled under blue skies around the base of the Lincoln Memorial. Fifty years ago, on that spot, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. delivered his I Have a Dream speech. Speaker after speaker implored them to become active participants in the quest for racial equality and harmony. Representative John Lewis, Democrat, Georgia, was the only speaker from the 1963 march. He fired up Saturday's crowd by pushing them to fight against the recent Supreme Court decision that struck down a key part of the Voting Rights Act of 1965. I gave a little blood on that bridge in Selma, Alabama, he told the crowd, referring to the 1965 Bloody Sunday March from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama. Protesters were brutally beaten back then on the Edmund Pettus Bridge. I got arrested 40 times during the 60s, beaten and left bloodied and unconscious. But I'm not tired. I'm ready to fight and continue to fight, and you must fight. Our quest for justice. Attorney General Eric Holder echoed his message. He said Saturday's event was about far more than reflecting on our past. He said, this morning we must affirm that this struggle must and will go on in the cause of our quest for justice until every eligible American has the chance to exercise his or her right to vote. He added that it must continue until all are treated equally and fairly in the eyes of the law. District of Columbia officials said they expect expected at least 700 55 passenger buses from out of town. The director of the NAACP's Washington Bureau estimated that more than 100,000 people were on the mall by noon on Saturday. The people around the Lincoln Memorial were celebrating, but the mood was also thoughtful. People sat on blankets or on lawn chairs and cheered as speakers made their points. Many young people and adults wore t-shirts or buttons. Some carried signs protesting the acquittal of George Zimmerman and the shooting death of Florida teenager Trayvon Martin. Martin's mother was cheering loud with loud was cheered loudly when she appeared. The right to assemble. Emma Daniel, 70, wore a cap adorned with buttons from the 1963 march. Daniels pointed to where she and other members of her Georgia church stood 50 years ago when they made the bus journey to Washington. I wanted my children to have the same feeling that I had. Change, said Daniels. We came out here to march for change. We can't stay home. We've seen a lot of change. We're going forward. It's slow, but we're moving forward. Daniel said she noticed a different atmosphere Saturday than in the August 28, 1963 march. She said she remembers there being an air of concern then. Many of the 250,000 people who were there that day traveled through a segregated South. They feared being stopped by inhospitable law enforcement officers along the way. There is so much, this is so much more relaxed than when we came up, like a family reunion, she said. Melanie Marshall, Daniel's daughter, says Saturday's event gave her a greater appreciation for the right to assemble. In Egypt, people are fighting and killing each other in the streets, she said. We're lucky to be able to come together like this in a peaceful way. Obama to speak on March, or sorry, August 28th. Amber Brown, 43, made the five-hour drive from North Carolina with her two children. She said she wanted her children to learn that there are people who fought and died to give them the opportunity to do whatever they wanted and be whatever they want to be. <clears throat> Daryl Simmons, 21, 
made the bus journey to Washington with fellow students from South Carolina's Claflin University. He said he just wanted to relive history. He added, we're not exactly dealing with what happened 50 years ago, but there's stuff going on and we're here for justice. Simmons is president of Claflin's Young Democrats. Wednesday is the March on Washington's official anniversary. Another large crowd is expected at the Lincoln Memorial on August 28th. President Barack Obama will speak at the spot where King made history. The nation's first African-American president is expected to discuss the progress and problems the nation has faced as it tries to live up to King's dream. A dream, King said in his speech, that is, his children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character.